Hello, Darren Alf here from BicycleTouringPro.com. You know me as the guy who has spent the last 20 years riding a bicycle like this one that you see behind me all around the world. But what you might not know is that I have also done a fair amount of motorcycle touring as well. This is actually my KLR 650 touring motorcycle that I've ridden across North America several times and up into Canada. And so today I thought I would point out some of the similarities and differences between my touring bicycle that you see behind me, the Co-Motion Siskiyou Touring Bicycle, and my touring motorcycle, the Kawasaki KLR650. Obviously, my bicycle is not motorized, and this is probably one of the biggest differences between the bicycle and the motorcycle, is the fact that the motorcycle has a giant engine on it, and my bicycle has no engine at all. Although, I do have a pinion gearbox, which is an internal gearing system, so all of my gears are inside this box here, but this bicycle is not electric. It does not have a motor on it. I still have to pedal um, in order to keep going forward, so it may look like I have a motor down here, but I really don't. The other thing we should talk about is the weight difference between these two bicycles. My motorcycle, when there's no weight on it at all, none of this gear on the back of the bike, weighs about 450 pounds. Then once I add all the gear, I could be closer to 550 plus my weight, which is about 170 pounds. You can see we're really getting up there. Then the bicycle weighs about 34 pounds with nothing on it, just the rear racks and the, the bicycle itself. But once I add those bags and a whole bunch of water and food and everything, this bicycle might weigh close to 90 or 100 pounds, which is quite a lot for a bicycle, but still considerably lighter than the motorcycle here. Now, while we're talking about weight, we should talk about weight distribution, because the weight on these two bicycles is distributed very, very differently. The motorcycle down here, the heaviest part of the motorcycle is down here where the engine is. And as you can see, the engine is kind of forward and in the middle of the bicycle. I'm gonna scoot back so you can see. The engine is right here in the middle. And when I sit down, I am kind of in the middle, but I'm kind of like two thirds into the back. Whereas on the bicycle, the weight, most of the weight, even you know when there's no weight on the bicycle at all, is kind of distributed mostly on the rear part of the bicycle because when I sit down on that saddle right here, I am way in the back. And that is why with a touring bicycle such as this, you tend to see bags not only on the back of the bicycle, but also on the front. And it's because you wanna distribute the weight as evenly as you can across the bicycle. And because a, a bicycle doesn't have that big engine in it sitting up here on the forward side of the bike, we try to move as much weight as we can from the back of the bicycle to the front of the bike. And that is why you oftentimes see these front panniers on many touring bicycles is because we're trying to get the weight from the back of the bike where the rider is sitting and where these rear bags are to the front of the bicycle. And same with the handlebar bag up here. It's, it's moving the weight from the back of the bicycle or the rear tire to the front. The more the weight of the bicycle is down towards the ground and in the center of the bicycle, the easier it is to control the bike. And that is why a motorcycle's weight is generally in the center of the bicycle. And that is also why when you ride a fully loaded touring bicycle like this, a bike that could weigh 90 or 100 pounds, you want to try to get the weight as low as you possibly can. See how low these panniers are mounted to the ground? and you wanna to try to get the weight distributed so that the weight on the entire bicycle is as close to this point down here as you can possibly get it. Now let's look at the panniers on the bicycle and the motorcycle. These are the bags that I carry all my gear in, my food, my clothing, my camping equipment, etc., etc. Now on the bicycle, I have a set of Bike Packer Plus and Sport Packer Plus waterproof panniers and these are backpack size bags that attach to the bicycle via these racks that you see on the front and the back of the bicycle here and these are waterproof bags um, each one 
carries quite a bit of gear actually. Um, these bigger ones are on the back and the smaller ones are on the front, but these are really some of the best waterproof bicycle touring panniers that are out there in the world right now. And these bags are for sale in the Bicycle Touring Pro store. I sell them on my website, bicycletouringpro.com forward slash shop. They are a uh, kind of like bucket and lid style pannier. So they open at the top here and then you can easily access all of your gear that you have inside. Inside this pannier I have my sleeping bag, my sleeping mat, and my tent all inside of this one pannier. Now on the motorcycle I carry most of my gear inside these two Pelican cases that are found on the right and left side of the bicycle. So these are just two regular Pelican cases that has have been converted into motorcycle touring side cases. And you open them up here. These are also waterproof. And um, you can see I got a few little things in there at the moment, but um, yeah, they kind of open to the side which means that when you open these things, they kind of spill out. But they also come off of the motorcycle fairly easy. There's a lock here. You just turn this, then you lift up, and the whole case comes off. So if you're staying in a hotel or something, you can easily take these side cases off, bring them into your room like a suitcase, and uh, you're set to go. And the same is true with the panniers here. Um, you just come over here, you pull the little handle, boom, and the pannier is off your bicycle and you can bring it inside your tent or inside your hotel room, etc. Now, most of the time when I'm riding my motorcycle, I ride it like this. It looks like this with just the, the rear two side cases. But when I'm touring, I put this backpack on the back of the motorcycle on the rear rack and I bungee cord it down, obviously, so it's not just laying on top of there. But um, this is how I tour with all of my stuff on the motorcycle because I found that the things that I need for motorcycle touring simply just don't fit inside these two rear side cases. And I need this additional bag to carry all of my camping equipment. So I usually have my tent, my sleeping bag, my sleeping mat, and maybe um, some warm clothes or something inside this backpack as well. And then food and I don't know, water and other things inside these other side cases over here. In addition to the side cases and the backpack on the motorcycle itself, I also have this tank bag which acts as a map case when I am riding my motorcycle. So I'm sitting on the bike here and I can see this case and this is a transparent waterproof uh, material that I can put a map in so that when I'm driving my motorcycle I can simply look up to drive, look down to see where I am on the map, and then keep going. There's also a little bit of storage room inside this map case so that I can put some food in here or, I don't know, pens and keys and whatever else I might need uh, to access very easily while I'm riding my motorcycle. I usually put my camera in here and stuff like that. Now, the cockpit on my bicycle looks quite a bit different than the motorcycle. I have my phone mounted to the stem of my handlebars, and I use my smartphone to navigate. I also use it for entertainment. Um, while I'm out on the road, I'll listen to music or a podcast while I'm riding my bicycle. I've got a computer here that tells me how fast I'm going and how far I've gone for the day or for the total trip. And then I also have my handlebar bag, which is very easy to open with one hand while I'm riding. And I usually have my camera gear and stuff in here. I don't have it in there at the moment, but um, this is where my camera goes. I might have my wallet and passport and maybe even a little bit of food inside my handlebar bag so that I can access all of those things while I'm riding my bicycle. Now I should say that the motorcycle could have a smartphone mounted up here to the handlebars if I wanted to, but I've never actually done that myself. I've always just kind of carried my smartphone inside this bag and if I needed to check it or answer the phone or make a call or something, um, I would simply stop the motorcycle on the side of the road, flip this open, grab my phone and, and uh, check it for whatever I needed to check it for. I do not listen to music or podcasts or anything when I'm riding my motorcycle because I think it's far too dangerous to be doing that. I wanna be fully aware when I'm riding my motorcycle versus 
on my bicycle I'm usually going less than 15 miles an hour and if I'm on a quiet road I don't mind listening to a podcast or music but again in big cities I would never be listening to music I'm always trying to be very much aware of my surroundings so let's talk about speed and distance because on my touring bicycle I am generally averaging about 10 miles an hour which is about 16 kilometers per hour not a whole lot and maybe sometimes faster maybe sometimes slower depends on the terrain the wind the weather that sort of a thing but on average maybe about 10 miles an hour on this bicycle versus my motorcycle I'm, ge I'm generally traveling on like back roads and stuff I don't like to go on the, on the highways or freeways so I am usually going about 55 or 65 miles an hour on smaller back roads um, with this motorcycle and that means that over the course of a single day I usually tour about 300 miles per day on my motorcycle whereas with my bicycle I might only be getting somewhere between 50 and 80 miles per day on average and of course it could be less than that there are days where I've only gone 20 miles on my bike and there have been days where I've gone 150 miles on my bicycle same with the motorcycle there have been days where I've only gone 100 miles and there have been days where I've gone 500 miles so it really just depends on what you want to do but on average I would say that my bicycle goes about 50 or 60 miles per day and my motorcycle goes about maybe 250 to 350 per day on average so um, a big big difference between these two bicycles and the amount of distance that you can cover on a daily basis with each of these bikes now let's talk about the difference between the clothing that you wear on each of these bicycles these are my bicycle shoes that I'm usually wearing on my touring bicycle and they are SPD shoes and they have these metal clips that allow me to clip into the pedals on my bicycle at the moment I have flat pedals on this bike but I usually am wearing SPD pedals and SPD shoes like this on my touring bicycle whereas with my motorcycle I'm wearing a much bigger heavier shoe like this this is a boot and um, yeah as you can see this gives my foot and ankle a whole lot more protection when you shift gears on a motorcycle you have to put your toe under this lever here and you push it up and push it down and same on the other side in order to hit the brake over here you have to put your foot on this little pedal down here and press quite hard and so you need a good pair of shoes when you're riding a motorcycle you need something like this that really gives your foot and ankle a whole lot of protection also if you're in an accident on a motorcycle you want something heavier uh, on your feet in order to protect yourself because you're traveling at a much greater rate of speed now for what you wear on your upper body you can see the difference once again is quite extreme this is a long sleeve racing like uh, mountain bike jersey that I might wear on my touring bicycle and you've probably seen me wear this in a whole bunch of my videos as I've traveled around the world this is a Fox racing mountain bike jersey and uh, it's it's a very lightweight breathable material and what I like about this is it doesn't stink after multiple days out on the road um, it's a very very good long-lasting bike jersey whereas this is the jacket that I'm oftentimes wearing on my motorcycle tours and it is a very heavy duty motorcycle jacket it has multiple layers inside here so that you can really wear this in like extreme cold and snow if you wanted to one of the things about traveling on a motorcycle is that the faster you go the colder it gets and so even on warm days when you're riding this motorcycle it can feel very very cold uh, as you're riding so you want a warm jacket to ride in pretty much each and every time you go out for a bike ride on a motorcycle and that's where a jacket like this really comes in handy now I've chosen this fluorescent yellow and black jacket because as you can see my my bicycle my motorcycle is almost entirely pure black and I wanted to make sure that people would be able to see me one of the things that you learn when you go to like motorcycle training here in America is that you want to have at least one part of your bicycle be visible so my my lower half of my motorcycle is almost invisible because it's black but the top half of my motorcycle which is my body is very very visible now ideally you would want to have your full 
motorcycle be visible so that cars and trucks and stuff could see you but because um, my motorcycle is so dark and kind of blends in with the road I chose to have a very bright and light motorcycle jacket I wanted to make sure that people could see me out on the road also this jacket really protects my neck like it has this extra neck thing so that I can um, I don't get wind chill basically coming up into my neck as I ride. I also it also has like tons of padding on it so that if you were in an accident, you're uh, there's, see there's like a big pad here. Um, you aren't going to scrape your arms. Um, there are there's a back plate in there, and it also has the ability to carry a camel pack in the back of the jacket here so that when I'm riding my bicycle, I can access my water supply simply by sucking on the straw of the camel pack. Whereas on the bicycle, I just have these two water bottles to access the water as I'm riding my bike. Finally, there is a major difference in headgear that you wear between motorcycle touring and bicycle touring. The helmet on the right here is my bicycle helmet and it's very light like it weighs almost nothing and as you can see it kind of really only protects the top and back of my head um, there's really nothing to support the front of my face my chin anything like that versus the motorcycle helmet here which is basically protecting my entire head um, and it has a visor that flips up here so that I can open this up if I need to when I'm riding my bike But um, this visor is down at all times when I'm riding my bicycle. So it's protecting my eyes It's protecting my nose. It's protecting my chin um, It's protecting everything front back and Side now as I said before I have been riding my bicycle around the world for the last 20 years And I have worn a helmet like this one on each and every one of my bicycle tours but the helmet is actually the one thing that I've brought on each and every one of my trips that I have never actually used I've never actually used my helmet I've worn it on my head but I've never actually needed it because I've never been in an accident of any kind on any of my bicycle trips my motorcycle helmet as you can see is much bigger much heavier much more heavy duty and if i were to be involved in an accident this helmet is going to do a whole lot more to save my life now that i wear this helmet on my bicycle this feels almost like a, like a toy or something um, in comparison to my motorcycle helmet and one of the things that um, happened to me a couple years ago is I was actually riding my motorcycle through the deserts here in Southern California and the day before I went out on my ride uh, it had rained and I was going about 65 maybe even close to 70 miles an hour through the desert and there was a car falling very very close behind me uh, at that speed and I went around a corner very quickly and suddenly saw that there was a whole bunch of mud that had washed across the road in front of me um, as I was riding my motorcycle and I knew that if I hit that mud my bike would potentially like spin out and I would lose control and crash but if I slammed on the brake the car behind me was gonna hit me and so I slowed down a little bit hoping that that would be enough to get me through the mud without crashing and also slowed down a little bit so that the car behind me didn't slam into me at 70 miles an hour but I didn't slow down enough I hit that mud patch my motorcycle slid out completely to the side I went over the front of the handlebars I remember seeing the front wheel like this close to my face um, but again I, I'm wearing this giant motorcycle helmet I'm wearing this protective uh, jacket I'm wearing I was wearing like full-blown motorcycle pants and boots and everything else and I just remember thinking this is gonna hurt whatever is about to happen this is gonna hurt because I was going maybe at that time I, I like I said I had slowed down so I was going about 50 miles an hour and I hit the ground luckily I hit the ground in the mud so the motorcycle and my body hit the mud and we slid all the way across the road into oncoming traffic luckily there was no oncoming traffic into the oncoming lane and I somehow landed on the bike in such a way that I didn't hurt myself really at all I had a few little scratches on me um, and the bike needed to be like restarted I had to undo the battery and rehook the battery in order to get the, the motorcycle started I ended up breaking the mirror 
off of the motorcycle so you can see like my motorcycle now has two different mirrors that's the original mirror that came with the motorcycle and this is some like replacement mirror that I found on eBay or Amazon or something so that's why I have two different mirrors on my motorcycle is because I ended up crashing the bike and you can see um, some evidence of the crash here where the side cases were sliding through the mud and into the uh, on the gravel or you know on the pavement or whatever so it wasn't a huge crash I didn't do like a, a massive amount of damage to the bicycle but it could have been very dangerous but I was very glad at the time that I was wearing all of this protective gearing because I was going so fast that I could have really really hurt myself and and also this bicycle with the fact that it was weighing over 500 pounds at the time uh, did land on top of me, but luckily my leg was kind of um, in between the side case and the, the front of the motorcycle here. So I was kind of, my whole body was kind of wedged in this space and I didn't end up getting hurt, which was fantastic. But my point with this entire story is that when you're riding a bicycle, you're only going about 10, 20 miles an hour. And so um, maybe a helmet like this is all you really need. But when you're riding a motorcycle, um, I think it would be crazy to be out there riding without a helmet of some kind like this. Now, one of the great things about transitioning from bicycle touring to motorcycle touring is that a lot of the equipment is the same. I use the same tent, the same sleeping bag, the same sleeping mat. I use a lot of the same cooking gear. I use a lot of the same clothing. But the cost of these two bikes, believe it or not, is very similar to one another. This motorcycle is actually a low-end motorcycle. This is a, a bike that costs about $5,500, $6,000 in the United States of America, brand new. Whereas this bicycle is a handmade touring bicycle made in the state of Oregon by a company called Comotion Cycles, and this bicycle also costs more than $6,000. So this bicycle by itself actually costs more than my motorcycle. But there's not just the cost of the bikes themselves, there's also all of the accessories, the side cases, the panniers, the racks, and all of the other stuff that you put on your bike. So the side cases and the rack that I purchased for this motorcycle over here cost about 900 US dollars. And all of the racks and panniers and handlebar bag that you see on my bicycle over here, all of that cost about 800 US dollars, believe it or not. I also have a tank bag up here, which acts as my kind of like handlebar bag. That was about maybe $75. Whereas the handlebar bag over here on my bicycle cost about $125. Um, the smartphone and stuff that I use to navigate on my bicycle is the same over here as it is over here. So no extra cost there. The clothing is quite a bit different now. Clothing for a bicycle is much, much cheaper than the clothing for a motorcycle. The helmet for my motorcycle cost about $200. My helmet for the bicycle cost about $100, maybe $85, $75, something like that. Um, my bicycle clothing, I usually just wear a cheap pair of shorts, 50 bucks, and my jersey that I'm wearing is maybe $75. Whereas with my motorcycle, the boots I was wearing are $300. The helmet was $200, gloves were maybe $75, that jacket that you saw was about $350, the pants that I wear were about $200. So as you can see, the clothing for motorcycle touring is a whole lot more expensive than the clothing I wear when I'm riding my bike. Overall, the cost between this bike and this bike are not all that different, but the ongoing costs of running this bicycle are so much more than the ongoing costs of running this bike. Once you buy all the gear you need for a touring bicycle, you're basically set to go and there are no ongoing costs. The ongoing costs are just simply like putting lube on your chain and you know putting new tires on every once in a while but with a motorcycle there's a whole lot of ongoing costs that you have to consider there's gas that you have to pay for on a regular basis there's 
the uh, license that you have to get. So you have to go to motorcycle training school and get a license. You've got to pay for the plates on the motorcycle. You've got to pay the annual fee for registration. You've got to pay an annual fee for insurance for both the bicycle and yourself if you were to get hurt while on the bicycle or crash into somebody while you're riding their bike. So there's all of these extra fees and, and these fees can account to thousands of dollars over the course of the year. And, and I've actually paid for storage to put my motorcycle in when I'm not using it so there's storage fees as well etc 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 so in the end while the upfront cost of this bicycle over this bicycle is not that different the ongoing costs of owning a motorcycle are far far greater than owning a touring bicycle such as this all right so you're probably wondering now which do I like more bicycle touring or motorcycle touring. Now, I'm not just saying this because I'm the bicycle touring pro, but in all honesty, I do like bicycle touring more than I like motorcycle touring. And the reason I like bicycle touring more is because even though I think motorcycles are cool and it is a whole lot of fun to ride my motorcycle, um, I think bicycle touring is better because you go slower and you can see more things as you ride. On a motorcycle, just like in a car, you're going so fast that you fly past things that you would otherwise see on your bicycle. So I like that about bicycle terrain. The other thing I like about bicycle terrain is that it's much more rewarding. When you finish a day of bicycle terrain, you feel good about what you have just accomplished. Like your body is sore and you're tired, but there's like this feeling, the dopamine that's running through your body, the adrenaline, whatever it is, um, you feel good about accomplishing your ride for the day. Whereas on a motorcycle, yes, um, I'm proud that I finished the ride and I made it there safely. Usually my butt's a bit sore and my muscles are sore, but I don't have that same sense of accomplishment on a motorcycle as I do on a bicycle. And finally, the last reason I like bicycle touring a whole lot more than I like motorcycle touring is because I think bicycle touring is a whole lot safer than riding a motorcycle. Motorcycles are dangerous. <laughs> I can say this firsthand. Um, it's just scary to be riding at these sorts of speeds, you know, 55, 65, 75 miles an hour on a motorcycle next to semi trucks and big cars and Suburbans and people are on their phones and it's just freaking scary to ride a motorcycle. If there were no other cars on the road, and I was just riding my motorcycle around the world or something, it, would be, it wouldn't be scary at all. It's the other cars and the other people that I think make motorcycle touring very, very dangerous. Now, there is some danger to riding a bicycle, but because you're not traveling at 50, 60, 70, 80 miles an hour on a bicycle, you're traveling at 10, 20 miles an hour, and you're riding in the shoulder, which is oftentimes separated from cars, I just think bicycle touring is a whole lot safer. I've had this motorcycle for 10 years and I've crashed it like two or three times and I've had some very close calls. My bicycle, on the other hand, I've been riding for 20 years all around the world and I've never crashed my bicycle really in any sort of way. I've had like a little spill where I slipped and fell over the bike or something like that, but I've never had a car to bicycle accident. I've never had an incident where I was severely hurt, never broken a bone, nothing. So in the end, I think bicycle touring is a whole lot better than motorcycle touring. And if I were to invest in the future, if I was someone who was like thinking, should I get a bicycle or should I get a motorcycle? I would definitely go with a bicycle. I think it's better for your health. It's a much safer ride. You'll see a whole lot more as you're traveling by bicycle. And even though you can't go as fast, maybe it's not as cool as a motorcycle, it is a whole lot of fun. So if you wanna learn more about bicycle touring, riding a bicycle like this, be sure to head on over to my website at bicycletourningpro.com. I have over 1,200 free articles there that will teach you how to set up a touring bicycle like this and how to conduct long distance bicycle tours anywhere in the world. I also have my book, The Bicycle Touring Blueprint, which is a 400 page guide that will teach you everything you need to know in order to conduct your own bicycle touring adventures anywhere in the world. And if you are new to the Bicycle Touring Pro YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe because I have hundreds of videos here on the channel that will teach you how to conduct your own bicycle touring adventures anywhere in the world. All right guys, that's it. 
I am Darren Alf from BicycleTrainPro.com. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you out on the road sometime soon. Bye-bye.